Today is July 23rd, 2022, and with 677 days left until I through hike the Appalachian Trail, I find myself back in the Catskills, New York area to train my body and my mind with some beautiful mountains. My current goal is to hit up all of the fire towers in the Catskills and Adirondack Mountains. With only one left to complete in the Catskills, the Red Hill Fire Tower in the Sundown Wild Forest, I decide to make a day of it and visit what is affectionately called the Gunks in rock climbing communities as well. This is where my day started, hiking up Millbrook Mountain to see Gertrude's Nose in the Minnewaska State Park Preserve. After I paid the $10 for entry and found my way to the parking lot, I set out on the trail. I was immediately greeted with an exquisite view of Lake Minnewaska, and I was happy to get a peaceful moment to enjoy her splendor. It was a really hot day, and as the hours went by, the park filled up with people seeking out the lake's beach, but less were up for the mountain climb on a 94 degree kind of day. Climbing Millbrook Mountain on any given day would only be considered moderate in difficulty, but due to the heat and already having a recent day that I pushed myself to see what my capacity in heat was, I decided to purposefully worry less about my pace and making walking productive with fitness gains. This is such a good place for that too because I can soak in the pleasures from the landscape and give my mind a break too. At about 30 minutes per mile, I think in a way that rolls and flows from one present moment to another. There's no agenda. Just here, there, now, and softly smiling as much as possible. Sometimes giggling, too. This is as close to harmony as I may ever experience. You know, when the ravenous pack of wolves in my head, aka the to-do list and the media and the battle to be valuable and worthy, etc., 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 They all lie down for a moment so I can hear the tenderness of nothing. When reason is no longer running the show, but rather something that's a little bit more mindless. I am on the other side of the lake now and I let the water offer some nature therapy. Though I'm still fully committed to my business and its schedule while training to hike the AT, I feel more of a calling to create time for spaciousness in my mind and my pace to have time where my only exertion is the technical common sense needed to gauge the weather or the terrain, to give my nervous system balance in contrast to scurrying from my home to another building as fast as I can to serve my community. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my work, and I've even been called a workaholic in the past. But now that I have a taste of how it can be different, I know what it's like to make decisions from the stance of a woman that is free. And yet... It's okay for now to ride both worlds with ample time for a gentle tapering from one identity to the next. My clients and my team will appreciate that. Made it to the top. Welcome to Millbrook Ridge. There will be a couple of miles distance along this ridge line to get over to Gertrude's nose. The ridge line offers view after view of the Hudson Valley and New Paltz area. The heat offers a blazy, hazy perspective that is almost like a glow, and I relish in the sweet, sacred presence and peace that this day is demanding of me to recognize. I feel grateful for today only being one day of the journey over the next couple of years, and how training is becoming a lifestyle and a mindset, offering a much wider perspective to going on a hike than one might commonly encounter. This is an opportunity to experience and share so many nuances that are rooted in nature, as well as the awe-filled wonder and romantic meaning that I am placing on them. It's not just about going on a hike to feel happy. It's about feeling it all. I don't expect anyone to share in these meanings, but I do hope you'll appreciate them as they expand and as time goes on. I'm owning that I have rose-colored glasses on, as I see that all I have to do is go step, step, step up into wide open skies, and that at least for now, nature and I are meant to do life together. But what if every day I had this confidence? I'm working on actively imagining this, the spending hours and hours in nature daily, being in communion. Some may think that with the way that life is structured these days, this is a pipe dream, but here I am. And this is such a voluptuous place that I don't want to leave. Can you see Gertrude Bruin's nose? Isn't that neat? Someone else, way back in the 1600s, used their imagination to say that this rock face resembles that of the woman who owned a deed to this land. And it stuck. And she let it stick. How freaking lighthearted. I love imagination. I'll let myself imagine that she laughed and laughed and loved the sentiment. Imagination is my way of planning. 
there is plenty that I could worry about in regard to how to accomplish everything I need to to get on the AT. But worry is not love. And in this journey, I want to love and I want to have fun every single day. Okay, one more nifty view to see before making the descent and driving to the Red Hill Fire Tower. This is Patterson's pellet. I couldn't find any information about why this rock that a glacier left hanging precariously on a cliff 14,000 years ago is called Patterson's pellet. So if you find out why, please leave a comment or send me a message and let me know. It is right on the edge though, and it's just heavy enough to stay stuck there for all of eternity. With the theme of things sticking, I have a little pep in my step and faith in my process. On to the fire tower. I drive about 40 minutes northwest and into the sundown wild forest to get to the last of the hikes I will do in the Catskills region for a while. I plan to move on to the Adirondacks in a few weeks. A winding seasonal dirt road takes me to the trailhead for the Red Hill Fire Tower. There is good parking though, and the signs are clear. This will be a short hike. Follow the yellow blazes 1.4 miles. After being in the sun, I welcome a different landscape with more shade and green and a glimpse of moss and cool water here and there despite the drought we are experiencing this summer. It is a continuous uphill and steep climb, but very short, just as promised. I arrive sweating, and I'm surprised to see a couple of guides and quite a few people relaxing at the top. One of the guides thanked me for climbing a mountain just to come see him, and I smiled at his 70 or 80 year old sprite way of harmlessly flirting with me. He takes me to the top of the tower. At the top of the tower, I spend about 30 minutes listening to his story about all of the Catskills accomplishments he has despite back surgery, and he gives me a tour of the mountains I am viewing. In a 360 degree view, I am proud to say hello to many of them like familiar friends as I was just on their tops a few short weeks or months ago. I also learned that from this particular tower, you can see Vermont. Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania as tiny little slivers along the horizon. I squint and I choose to just believe him, feeling thankful that I'm going to have LASIK surgery next week for this very reason. The guide ends on this note. More and more people are turning to nature to find their delight and escape the stress of everyday life. He's really surprised that I'm the fourth or fifth woman to be hiking alone today. He asks me, why are women hiking alone? I can only give him my answer. Whether I'm alone or not, this is my respite. He says that he can definitely understand that. I'm secretly proud of my sisters out there doing hard mountains and other hard things by themselves because it's what they desire to do, no matter what their reason is. Hike on, lovies.